Do you know what I hate about subscription software? You have a monthly fee, you don't own the software, if your internet's out, you can't get to the software or get to the files that you're working on, and if you choose to cancel your subscription or the company goes bust, you've lost the software and your files. So is there an alternative to software as a service in 2024? Well, as it happens, there might be. So the great folks over at Libri reached out to me and asked me if I would like to try their hobby software Atom 3D. Of course, I said yes. Why not? I'm always open for trying new things. So let's take a look at the software and see what the unique selling points are. Atom 3D comes as a perpetual license, meaning you own it for lifetime. What does lifetime really mean? Well, in, in 10 years time, if you have a Windows 10 or Windows 11 installation still running, and you install it, the software will still work. Your files will still be accessible and you'll still be able to model with it. So a perpetual license means you own it for a lifetime. So Adam 3D does seem to check off a bunch of items from the bucket list that you would expect from some CAM software. The ability to make things in a parametric framework. You can combine parts together into assemblies. A bunch of analytical tools to measure and analyze. Alibri can also import a number of file formats such as SOLIDWORKS, STEP files, SAT, Drawing, DXF and SGV files. Equally, Atom 3D can export file formats such as STL for 3D printing, STEP files for interoperability between CAD programs, OBJ and Drawing file formats, DXF and SVG file formats for laser cutting, CNC, and also PDF formats. So the first look at this user interface, to me, looks very familiar. It has a very familiar look and feel to it, to other CAD programs that I've used in the past. You have what appears to be an itinerary of your operations, possibly. You have a series of operations that you can apply to the geometry that you're working on. So it appears that these yellow items is to add material and these blue items are to remove. That's slightly different to what I'm used to in terms of its layout, but it makes sense. We've got the standard modification, fillet, chamfer, shell. These, these are all things that they sit on the ribbon and it feels normal, right? It, it feels familiar. So if I was to model, I have this TDS meter, which I modeled in another video that I did. Let's see if we can replicate this model in Atom 3D. So I want to activate the 2D sketch. And I want to apply it to this plane. So I use the cube to navigate. And here we are in our sketch workflow. So I'm just going to do what I did before. I'm just going to draw the sketch. And now can I put some dimensions? I can. So this was 30 millimeters. Let me grab my digital calipers. 155 in length. Okay, I don't see a center rectangle. I don't know if that's just an option, or whether or not I've got to place the geometry of that a particular way. Okay, let's see if we can do that. If I want to place my rectangle center point here, let's see if we can do that. So a rectangle and just draw a rectangle on screen. So if I dimension, don't know the shortcut, so I'm going to have to use the ribbon. So 30 millimeters there. I dimension there to there and say that's 15. This is 155. Okay, let's see if we can do some math in here. So let's see if we can go 155 divided by two. Will that accept? It will, excellent. Okay, so using my radius finders, I'm going to measure. So along with a set of digital calipers, I like to use my radius finders, and these are made to find the internal and external radiuses of objects that I'm trying to model. And it just helps me get a more accurate model in the real world into CAD. And all I do is take one of these gauges, if you like, and offer up the edge of the object I'm trying to model and read off which radius it is. And I can then translate that straight into the computer. And to use it, all I need to do is take the object I'm trying to model and offer up until such time, rotate it around until such time as I find the correct radius. And this is an eight millimeter radius. So let's see if we can use a fillet tool. There's got to be a fillet tool in here somewhere. Can we put a fillet? Yep, there's the fillet. Figures to fillet. So we want to fillet this and this and that and that and the fillet is 
eight millimeters. Okay, so it appears that you've got to apply the fillet to the corner individually, not as a group, unless I'm doing something wrong, which is entirely possible. So we'll deactivate the sketch, and now we want to extrude this sketch. So let's hit click. We're going to click the extrude button, and then we're gonna click the sketch that we want to extrude, and we want to extrude it by 14 millimeters. So there's our TDS meter. Let's see if we can just put a sketch on the surface here, and we want to model in some of these features that it has. So if I choose activate sketch and click this surface, excellent. We're now sketching on the surface of this object. And I'm gonna repeat what I did before. So I'm going to draw some lines. I'm going to draw them off center. And we're gonna see if we can correct this very rough model that we're making. So first and foremost, I'd like to make a coincidence. What, what would have been a coincident? Maybe. Okay, so let's see if we can use our constraints just to square this up. So constraints. Okay, we got a right, what appears to be a right angle. Perfect. Okay, so what have we got here now? Coincident constraint. Okay, can we select this line? We can. So if I click this little dot here and then this line, it should snap. It does. Excellent. And then the last thing I need to do just to square this up is to choose the what tool is this perpendicular constraint make it perpendicular there okay can i delete that constraint i can excellent so now we're going to do the same over here we're just going to square this up with itself it's really interesting to see how this sketch is reacting to the constraints that i'm applying to it oh, there's a little there's a little constraint toolbox here i like it can't choose coincident right now so i'll choose it from up here Perfect. And I just realized I've done this completely wrong. So if I just delete these a moment, I'm intuitively just doing this, right? So I just selected those lines and hit delete. We want this feature to come in from the bottom. And again, I'm intentionally doing this badly and I want my, my constraints to pull this in. So let's make these, let's start with the coincident, right? I want that to be a coincident of that, that to be a coincident of that. And now I can click with a perpendicular tool to square everything up. And now I can add some dimensions to this so that it's correct to our model. So let's use our dimensioning tool. I select this line and this edge here. That's eight, we are 25 millimeters. Perfect. And what's the depth across the face of this? 28. Okay, now turn our attentions to the other side where the controls are. And the first dimension off the edge is 20 millimeters, 72 millimeters across. Interesting. Now that's now become a driven. It appears that we have a constraint added, which is this parallel, is it? Or equal? I don't know. Let's see if I can remove that constraint. Yes, I can. What constraint was that? Equal constraint. So it was an equal between these two points. So I had to remove that. And bearing in mind, I've not really used this tool before. We're doing really, really well. We want 28 millimeters. Okay, so now we want to put in a fillet to radius the corners. Let's just find what that radius is. And that's six millimeters using the radius finder. So let's not make the mistake of what we did last time. That's six millimeters. Okay, if we finish the sketch, it's now giving me a prompt. Sketch problems detected. Your sketch is not closed. Okay, so I believe it hasn't, even though I made it a coincident of this line here, I suspect we need to close the loop. Yeah, so let's, it told me. That's, that, that is pretty cool. I like that. I mean, there's always times that you get errors, but it, it actually told me what the problem was. Okay, something's not quite right. Okay, so if I make a line here, right? And I say, make that a coincident of that, that a coincident of that. Do the same over here, just insert the line. Now there's probably better ways of doing this, right? But I get rid of that constraint. There's probably better ways of doing this, but I'm using this tool with no training, no nothing, right? I'm coming in cold. Using the knowledge that I have from other CAD programs, okay. Maybe I did close it and it's just the way that this is displaying things. So we're going to do a removal. We're gonna do an extrude cut. Okay, we're gonna do, it selected those immediately, right? So we wanna go minus 
Let's click out of this box to see if it gives us a preview of what that's going to look like. It does. We click on OK. And if we now, can we, can we hide this or? But ultimately we now have our TDS meter model. Now, if I wanted to 3D print this, let's see how we would export it. So file, export, STL file, and we're gonna pop this on a drive. Let's put this on our desktop just so it's easy to find. We're just gonna take, we're just gonna take the default options. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so the orientation is not quite what I would expect, but that's easily corrected in our slicing software. We've got good definition in the model. I'm pretty happy with that. For something that I've not used before, I was able to come straight in here and model something based on my existing knowledge. Coupled with the fact that I've got a one-off fee for this software, it's mine, I own it. So if Elibri decided to make ice cream machines and not do CAD anymore, then we have access to our files. We can continue to use this because it is a perpetual license. So if you needed some confidence around the provenance of Elibri as a software company, if you have a look at their list of clients, it's quite impressive with the likes of Nikon, Zeiss, Fujitsu, and NASA among them. So I definitely think there's a place for Atom 3D with its perpetual license. While there is a cost to the software, it's quite attractive that you own the software and you have access to your files at any time, even when your internet is not working. So if you would like to give Alibri Atom 3D a try, why not click the link in the description below? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and check out one of my videos just here.